friends we are your hosts raj and aradhna asava bringing you the weekly hunger mitao program on fanasia through this 30 minute show each saturday we share with you updates on food insecurity in the north texas area while providing information on volunteering and food donation opportunities friends through this community led movement the indian american community is unifying its hunger relief efforts to emerge as a big part of the solution to fighting hunger in america thank you for joining us friends through this show we bring you the latest and greatest information about what's happening in the food banking system and how through hunger mitao we are making a difference unified as a community in the spirit of give where you live making a difference today and continue to make a difference for a better future please visit ntfb.org/hungermetao to learn more and join this movement you can be the first to find out about upcoming volunteer shifts food drives and other ways through which you can help the north texas food bank in ensuring that no one in the counties that they serve go hungry join our facebook group at hungermitao_northtexas to hear about the latest and greatest in our show today we'll talk about where does the food bank gets the food from in the first place then we will talk about what does the food bank do with the food after they get it and finally how does that food eventually gets to those that are in need and food challenged so ana here we go let us follow the food our focus today will be the operational model of your friendly neighborhood food bank awesome food banks are distribution facilities that warehouse repackage and distribute contributed food to member organizations and charities they receive food from a number of national and local sources although they rely heavily on surplus food donated in large quantities local food drives and individual donations are important too in one of our previous podcasts We had talked about how food banks have become very efficient food relief distribution machines for the US government. So, Anna, let me understand. 
food banks works closely with corporations governments and individual and they don't work independently that's right okay the united states department of agriculture usda provides billions of meals to our neighbors facing hunger each year the usda purchases food from farmers and delivers it to food banks for distribution in their communities the usda's programs are among the most reliable food sources for food banks each year the usda's food and nutrition service provides 1.9 billion pounds of food to stock part of the national school lunch program hmm. and provide food to the summer food service program wow the child and adult care food program the commodity supplemental food program the food distribution program on indian reservations and the emergency food assistance program that allocates food to state and local agencies for distributions through food banks or to feeding sites like soup kitchens and homeless shelters. Wow, that's a lot of programs. It's a lot of programs. This food comes with very stringent quality and temperature control requirements hmm. to ensure safe distribution to the end user. Since we are talking about food donated by the government, here is an interesting fact. Did you know that the 2019 trade embargo helped the food banks? Hmm. Food banks became beneficiaries of a U.S. Department of Agriculture program crafted and extended to support farmers who were affected by China's retaliatory tariffs. Part of the farmer bailout included a $1.4 billion program to buy food commodities directly from the farmers who were affected by the trade tariffs. And then that food was sent to the food banks, to the school outlets and other outlets to serve low income people. So in a sense, during the trade embargo of 2019, the food banks were flush with farm food, as well as stuff such as milk, different kinds of meats, fruits, lentils, pistachios, etc. All those items that were impacted by the food embargo. I actually still remember how each food bank seemed to have so much milk. <laughs> it was mind boggling. Soybeans, milk. It was very interesting. Right. So, but the food banks use it very efficiently to get it distributed and out to those who are in need. Absolutely. So we talked about government being one of the sources right. for food banks. What are the other sources? Farmers. Mm -hmm. Many food banks have relationships with local farmers, from small suburban gardens to sprawling rural operations, mm. which donate a portion of their crop to the food bank. These donations help food banks provide healthy meals to our neighbors who may not otherwise have access to fresh produce. Great relationship. These relationships are also a critical part of fighting food waste hmm. by giving farmers and growers an option to donate excess produce. What are some other sources of food that the food bank gets from? Well, there are companies, local businesses, grocers, hmm. right? Large and small food businesses, restaurants, bakeries, donate food to the food banks. These donations can be big, like a truckload of milk, mm. or smaller, a few boxes of extra bread from a local bakery. Donations from these groups include everything from dairy products to canned goods or even meat products. Last year, nearly 2.4 billion meals were donated to the Feeding America network from businesses alone. Wow. Grocery stores are donors to food banks. Mm. They donate produce that is unfit to be sold, but still perfectly good. Hmm. Mislabeled merchandise, you know, we never think about that. Hmm. Mislabeled merchandise cannot be sold in stores. Right. So it finds it way, its way to the food banks. Crushed boxes, etc. also create donation opportunities. For the businesses. 
Yes. And then food bank also purchases food. Mm -hmm. Sometimes food banks may purchase the items their neighbors need, but aren't donated regularly, such as protein, fresh produce, and dairy. You know, uh, Anna, food banks takes a lot of pride in ensuring that it is not just getting food to the needy, but it is getting nutritious food to the needy. Yeah. So in order to make it a nutritious meal out to the folks who are in need, it has to at times procure and supplement with these things that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So purchasing means food banks can be flexible to address needs specific to their communities, which are culturally or medically specific diets. Yeah. Food banks often buy this food at much lower prices than you and I when we go to spend at the grocery store. So donated dollars to the food bank turn into many more meals than us going to food bank and purchasing a food item and donating to the food bank. Of course, a call to the community is another way of food banks to receive food. Yeah, so the food drives, right? It's an essential source of high quality shelf stable items. Food drives provide flexibility for food banks. Food drives typically do not um, collect produce. Right. It's all shelf stable, non-perishable foods. So the food received can be distributed immediately or stored until needed. Hmm. Food drives are conducted year round by individuals, families, church groups, companies, businesses, etc who find this to be a very effective way to involve everyone. And a great way of giving back. Certainly. When a food bank sees more demand than supply of some particular food item, you may see a campaign come up, say a campaign to con collect peanut butter during summer. It reminds me, Raj, of the workings of a blood bank. Hmm. How a blood bank advertises the need for a particular blood group in the community when inventory goes low. Right. Just like that, you see occasional requests from your food bank for specific food types. Hmm. Most commonly noticed are the peanut and other nut butters. And protein, etc. Right. Many food banks are also enrolled in surplus programs in which grocers donate food they can no longer sell. Like we talked about, a granola bar box with a missing bar. Hmm. Right? Just one bar missing, they can't sell that. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, well, it's a granola bar box. Right. You paid for six, if there's only five in it, hmm. uh, there's a problem. So for some reason during the production, they did not get packaged correctly. Right. Wow, instead of destroying it, they just donate it to the food bank and then they can repurpose it. It's such a great concept when you think about it. We are saving a lot of food from going to waste. That's right. Crushed cereal packages where the inside is fine, mm. but the box is crushed. It just kind of look bent out of shape. Yeah, you and I wouldn't buy it. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. Or baked goods nearing expiration dates. Right. So all of those. So there is still a window to get the food out to the needy before it actually expires. Before the expiration date, yes. Wow. So Anna, we spoke about multiple sources through which the food bank receives the food. Mm -hmm. But once they receive it, food may not be ready for immediate distribution to the pantries or the partner agencies. Yeah. So most often it needs to be repackaged for either inventorying it on the shelves or distributing it to the pantries. So tell us a little bit about this process that the food bank goes through. You know, uh, how does it, it take the food that comes in bulk uh, and so randomly and then how does it go ahead and uh, process it and package it to get it out to the needy? It's a, it's a machine <laughs> and this is where volunteers come in Raj. We've both volunteered, we yeah. know how this process works. Larger food banks around the country depend on 40 to 50,000 volunteers over the course of a year to help them repackage and prepare food for distribution. When I say prepare food, it's not cooking food. Yeah, it's just getting it ready. Right? I'm glad you clarified that because I was thinking that's the ultimate prepared dinner, breakfast no. or lunch. No. No, you're talking about boxes of food or packages of food items that people can take it to their home and cook it? 
Right. Okay. Or, or mostly packaging it such that pantries can access it mm -hmm. and make it available to people. But at the end of the day, that food is not ready to con be consumed. It is to be eventually taken to a kitchen to be cooked. Right. Right. And we did uh, speak about this in a previous podcast that a food bank does not deal with cooked food. Excellent. Right. Yep. So depending on the programs at each food bank, volunteers help sort food, separating products, checking for expiration dates and nutrition, performing quality checks, breaking down institutional size packages into family friendly packages. Ah. You know, if somebody donates a 30 pound bag of rice from mm. like a Costco or a Sam's, mm. it's really difficult for the food bank to just give it to one family, <laughs> right? So, you know, things like that, you know, food banks have special rooms, clean rooms where these things can be broken down into smaller packages. Okay. Volunteers also help assemble packages for kid programs, senior food programs, and get food ready for the food bank's inventory systems. Ah, Anna, based on what you just said, food banks sounds like they are an efficient logistic enterprises. Exactly. Through the pantries, they have a pulse of the community and can serve it appropriately. They know what the need is. Mm -hmm. They often perform a strategic triage function, connecting food donations, food that they have received directly with the pantry, if that makes the most sense, mm -hmm. thereby preventing the handling or the time la lapse, which can cause food spoilage uh, so they are really working in a very efficient manner by knowing the, where the need is. And if the, if the food collected is close to where the need is, they can get them connected and the food may not ever get to the food bank. Right. So the food is never collected by the food bank. Interesting. Right. Yeah. There are several times, especially um, when it comes to produce Correct. and highly perishable items mm -hmm. it is in the best interest to get it directly to the pantries as quickly as they can that is fascinating i always somehow felt that as a part of the process all food has to first come to the food bank and then gets distributed but food banks are so forward thinking mm -hmm. that they are ensuring that those things that can be per that are perishable can actually get to the source as quickly as right. possible food banks are deploying the best technology mm -hmm. So it enables them to do things like this. No two days are alike though for a food bank. <laughs> food banks depend on donations of food. So a lot is unpredictable. They also serve as frontliners in the event of a disaster, hmm. ready to jump into action. It's a very delicate balance of planning, sourcing, fundraising, and resource planning to make it all happen. Food banks can vary in their distribution methods, but they usually support a list of member organizations and maintain a warehouse of goods available for pickup or delivery. Food banks typically receive food in bulk and through the volunteers repackage them for delivery. They have procedures similar to those of most sophisticated distribution related businesses and efficient processes, mostly donated foods, volunteers, economies of scale, and, as I, and a very effective distribution network are what helps food banks stretch each donated dollar into multiple nutritious meals. I remember, Anna, when we first heard about our local food bank enabling three meals to a dollar, mm -hmm. 33 cents for a nutritious meal. I found it surprising. Mm -hmm. Then as we started working with other food banks, the one in Seattle, they are so efficient. Now they are able to provide seven meals to a dollar. Right. So I can see now that through their efficiency and effectiveness and wonderful partners who are generously donating food to them and volunteers who are giving their time, they are able to truly stretch a donated dollar a long ways. Right. So let's talk about how pantries and other outlets receive their food from the food banks. So we have covered the inputs, 
where the food bank receives the food, the sources they get the food from. Mm -hmm. We have also touched on how the food bank processes the food that it receives, distributes logistics, etc. And now we're going to talk about how the food actually gets to the needy through their partner agencies. Is that right? Right. And you know, pantries, partner agencies, yeah. they're food. all the same uh, things. Right. Food programs and all that. Like the mobile pantry, etc. Right. Since pantries are the last mile servicing the community, they know the number of people served, their needs, dietary preferences, etc. The food bank's internal ordering system connects pantries with the food bank and the pantries can order the quantity and type of food needed for distribution into their community. The food is then either picked up by the pantry or dropped off by the food bank. Raj, some food banks, you, you talked about mobile pantries. Mm -hmm. Some food banks also operate mobile pantries. Okay. It's an expensive program hmm. because, you know, food has to be taken someplace in a truck okay. and brought back, etc. So the food has to be stored. So it has to be a refrigerated, refrigerated truck. truck. It's an investment on the part of a food bank. Okay. But these mobile pantries are like pop-up pantries to service an area that may be remote, hmm. severely underserved, has no pantry at all. And food banks strategically also use this as a pilot before investing resources to create a more permanent pantry in the region. Very interesting. Right? Hmm. So that's the mobile pantries. Several food banks also distribute food through schools and school pantries. So the whole point I think is enabling access to food, right? So hmm. taking food wherever people are. So, so member organizations, pantries are, however, required to meet specific criteria to become eligible to receive food from the food bank. Yeah. They must prove that they provide meals or food free of charge at their facilities. They need to ensure they maintain an ongoing feeding program and meet all state and federal tax and other codes required by the government. Member organizations don't pay for food. When again, when we say member organization, we talk about pantries and uh, all the other agencies, but they are usually responsible for some sort of processing or maintenance fee that constitutes a small portion of the cost of the goods they receive, transportation, maintenance, mm -hmm. etc. In order to remove any barriers to accessing food, most progressive food banks do not charge the pantries anything, not even the distribution or handling fee, just to ensure that if the need is there in a certain community, the pantry is not struggling to even come up with that fraction of a dollar to get that food to the needy. So for that, they wave off even the processing fee and the handling fee. <sighs> that is a lot of stuff we covered in a short podcast. <laughs> in summary, food banks depend on receiving food from a variety of sources. They serve as an efficient logistics machine to store, repackage and distribute the food items to their partner agencies. And finally, working with the pantries or partner agencies and through a variety of food programs, food banks ensure that nutritious food items get to people who need it in a timely manner. Wow. Now let's take a look at ways you and I can help a food bank near us. Food banks and food related charities need money, food and manpower to operate. You can help by donating money to a national food bank that is affiliated with Feeding America or give to a regional food bank in your area. Around the holidays, news clips of concerned citizens manning the food lines at local soup kitchen or area missions is a common sight. But the fact is that food banks need help all year long. They also need talented people who can run a forklift, keep the accounting books, build a website, or perform strategic planning tasks, accounting tasks, processing tasks, etc. 
If you have a special skill and are willing to volunteer, your unique contribution will help your local food bank, you know, in become even more effective and more efficient. If you can't volunteer your time and expertise, you can still do important work to help a local food bank. Like? Start a food drive hmm. or participate in one. Most food banks make it easy to institute a food drive program by providing drop-off bins and even project kits with great ideas to get you started. If you can't volunteer and don't have the time to start a food drive, you can still do lots of things to help your food bank help others. Discuss hunger with your family so they can help increase awareness among their circle of friends. Host a party and after you enjoy a hearty home-cooked meal, take up, take up a collection to help hungry families. What a great. Our vision, friends, is Hunger Mittau. And Hunger Mittau is as much about eradicating hunger as it is about unifying the fragmented efforts of our community and focusing it on the humanitarian cause of hunger. Let us come together as the entire Indian American community and show how we engage in any place we call home. We are smart, compassionate change agents who give where we live so our community benefits from our presence. And until next week, friends, remember, we may never be able to eradicate hunger, but we sure can ensure no one goes hungry. Hunger Mittau. Hunger Mittau.